I'm about to make a little bit of a bold statement. HTML has worked natively in Power BI for quite some time. Don't believe me? Well, look, here is a bunch of HTML and a string. Here is a bunch of CSS that I'm using. And here is the table that those two are producing. And no, I don't have any kind of third-party HTML visual in this file. So how is it working? Well, before I reveal that secret to you, go ahead and like this video and subscribe because it means a lot and we're almost at 5,000 subscribers. All right, that's enough on the sales pitch. Let's jump in. Are you ready for the big secret? Well, I'm using a DAX uh, UDF that I wrote that takes an HTML script and renders it as an SVG. And no, this isn't some wildly complex AI mismatch like some of the other ones that I've produced. This is very, very simple. This is the entire UDF. So it takes a width variable, a height variable, an is visible Boolean string, the HTML content as a string, and then uh, some CSS content as a string. It's very, very, very simple. The first thing that it does is it sets a variable called default CSS that is applied if you don't submit anything into the CSS section, just so there's some basic styling. Then it takes the HTML, and because it requires a strict HTML, it replaces anything that doesn't have a closing bracket. Uh, so for example, like a line break with a closing bracket. Then it takes the boolean is visible, and if the is visible equals false, it sets the visibility of the HTML item to hidden. This allows you to create text boxes or visuals that only appear when certain conditions are met. Then it simply builds out the SVG. And here is the secret as to how the SVG is rendering HTML. It's using a foreign object tag. Now, the width and the height variables that you set are used to set the SVGs width and height and then view box width and height. So that way you can scale them to make sure that the HTML is always visible. And then it simply returns the SVG. Now, what this means is that I can take an HTML script like the one that I showed you that's very, very complex. And I can take some base CSS here for example, this, and I can go ahead and I can use this UDF, right, to set the HTML and the CSS, and then use this resulting image string either in the new image visual, which is what I'm doing here to produce this table, or in a table itself. Now, this HTML is obviously a bit more comp complex, but uh, I can go ahead and create something much simpler. So for example, right, I if I just wanted to style, you know, a paragraph, I could go right here and go, my name is Ned and this is HTML. And it would render perfectly fine. Now I can also then go in and I can adjust my view box so it's not quite as big right? The problem is then it might end up cutting off some of that string. So right here, as you can see, we're now starting to lose visibility to some of that string. If I set this to 50, right, we're losing that visibility. So you have to kind of play with the view box just a little bit. There's also then this boolean, which if you set to false, um, hides the content, right? So now there's nothing. And then if you want it to be visible, so for example, if you wanted a text box or an HTML table to be visible on a condition, you can then set this equal to true. And there you go. Now you might be like, well, where can I get this marvelous UDF? Well, it is on my GitHub, which I will link down below in the video description. Um, where I also have a quick README. So here is the README along with some of the stuff it supports and some more examples. 
and then uh, the actual tmdl function, which you can copy out. Do, do, do. And you can bring into tmdl editor. You can go create or replace and then go new line. Now I have submitted this to uh, Daxlib and I'll work to get it approved. Um, in which case you'll just be able to search Edward Charles and it should come up here. You can see I have the uh, waterfall SVG that I made a video on recently published up and hopefully this one will be up there soon shortly.